In 2002, a French priest named Father Francois Brun wrote a book that translates in English to the Vatican's new mystery. In the book, he talks about how he met Father Pellegrino Ernetti, a Benedictine monk who was also a physicist and an exorcist, and they met on a boat ride in Venice, Italy in the early 60s. As they were talking about a variety of topics, the subject of interpreting the Bible came up, and this is when Father Annetti shared that theories and interpretations of the Bible were no longer necessary because he was able to literally see and hear the truth for himself. Father Annetti then told him that his time machine called the chronovisor, chrono being Latin for time and visor meaning look or vision, was created under the principle that energy is neither created nor destroyed, it only transforms. The chronovisor supposedly worked by receiving, unscrambling, and reproducing the electromagnetic radiation that's left behind from the past. The machine was invented in the 50s by a secret team of highly respected scientists, including Father Arnetti and Enrico Fermi. Fermi invented the world's first nuclear reactor and was a Nobel Prize winner for physics. He's also associated with the Manhattan Project and the Fermi Paradox. Some believe that the chronovisor worked by accessing the Akashic Records. The Akashic Records exist in the non-physical or mental plane and are said to hold every event, thought, word, action, and experience ever to have occurred in the past, present, or future in all life forms, not just human. Father Ernetti claimed that he captured the Last Supper and the Crucifixion of Jesus as well as a speech by Marcus Tullius Cicero to the Roman Senate in 16 BC. Cicero was known as a great orator and a leading political figure during the time of Julius Caesar and Mark Antony. He also allegedly saw the founding of the Roman Empire and the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. The machine was believed to be too dangerous by the Vatican as it allowed the user to see and hear any place at any time, and it completely took away the privacy of the person that was being viewed. It was allegedly disassembled, and the inventors were sworn to secrecy. Interestingly, the Vatican decreed in 1988 that anyone using an instrument of such characteristics would be excommunicated. Since we're on the subject of time travel, well, let's talk about a man named Andrew Bisiaco. Basiago claimed that as a child, he was involved in a CIA time travel program called Project Pegasus, not to be confused with the Pegasus Project. He ran for president a few years back, and his goal was to reveal what he considered the government's biggest secret, time travel. I was a child participant in DARPA's Project Pegasus, which was the U.S. time-space program at the time of the emergence of different forms of time travel in the U.S. defense technical community. Uh, it's been concealed from the American people that time travel existed as the secret twin essentially of Project Manhattan, the atomic bomb project, because at the time that Project Manhattan was being formulated and the world's, some of the world's leading physicists and, and engineers were being uh, settled in Los Alamos, New Mexico to develop the atomic bomb, Nikola Tesla's papers from his apartment in the New Yorker Hotel in Manhattan, New York, that had been seized by the War Department upon his death on January 7th of 1943, were forwarded by the President from the National Archives to Los Alamos, and they're still there. The Nikola Tesla's papers were never lost. Twenty-five years later, by 1968, the U.S. defense community had pioneered Tesla teleportation, which is the capability to open up a vortal tunnel in time space through which somebody can pass and by the fall of 1970 had found a way to adjust the time of the arrival of the individual via teleportation backward or forward in time. So I was brought in to Project Pegasus as a child participant in, officially in the fall of 1969. Today I'm a lawyer in private practice in Washington State, uh, have been for 20 years. For the past 10 years I've been running my own um, truth campaign around the advent of time travel. He wanted to declassify and inform the public about any technology that was associated with it, and this included the chronovisor that he claimed his father helped develop. They had also captured images of the crucifixion of Jesus of Nazareth. Now I know he was telling the truth because I saw a 20 to 30 minute 16 millimeter film 
of the crucifixion of Jesus at that was being displayed at the um, Sandia National Labs um, in Sandia, New Mexico in the summer of 1972. Now, when we left that viewing, my dad was with his longtime friend Connie Chavez, a woman that one, at one point that he wanted to marry, and she was just, just in distress watching the crucifixion of Jesus as it really happened. Jesus was an historical personage, he was crucified, and everybody in that room knew it because it wasn't a dramatized rendering of the crucifixion. It was horrendously awful to watch in light of Jesus' suffering. And we could, we could tell based on our understanding of the three New Testament accounts of the crucifixion of Jesus of Nazareth that it, it was a real event and not just some purported event. I mean, you have David Icke claiming that the Bible was scripted by the Piso family of Rome. You have people now in Eastern religions who have come out and tried to show that Jesus is just a recapitulation of a previous uh, deity. Um, my position is that what we were watching was a real crucifixion. Do I know it was Jesus? Well, everything that the New Testament depicts about the execution of Jesus of Nazareth was in that film. We saw women coming to pray beneath his cross. The, there were two other uh, crucifixion victims behind him on hillsides. He had a crown of thorns that was almost like a motorcycle helmet in size around his his head and blood was pouring down his temples and into his eye sockets and then down his cheeks and into the corner of his mouth. He was very emaciated. The women were chased away by a Roman centurion. I saw Longinus, one of those centurions, jump up on his left, uh, on, on, with his right leg and standing on his left leg and extend his arm as far as he could, holding the end of a spear shaft piercing Jesus in the side. That was a so-called uh, spear of destiny being used to release the fluids that had gathered in, in Jesus' uh, chest you know, cavity. Um, the sky grew dark at one point. So we knew it wasn't a dramatization. If it was somebody besides Jesus, how did so many of the details correspond to the New Testament accounts, there are three of them, of his, of his execution? The really incredible thing is not just seeing that, and as a Catholic Sunday school child being absolutely horrified by seeing the actual crucifixion of Jesus. Connie was just sort of squirming in her chair and not even most of the time able to look at the screen. At one point she actually put her hands and then like looked a little bit past some of her fingers at what we were watching, which was horrific. I actually felt like evil was present in the room, like it was buzzing in the center of the room like a, you know, a hive of, of bumblebees or something. We get outside and my dad says, to Connie, I don't know why you were acting like that. She said, Ray, I mean, they were crucifying my Lord. And he said, but don't worry. She said, why not? He, he said, because my team also went to where Jesus was lying in the crypt, and we have the footage where three days later, there's a flash of light in the crypt. Two men appear. He didn't say angels. Two men appear. Jesus stands up, and the three of them push the rock away, and he walks out of his crypt. Okay, so what my and Connie and I were obviously very astonished. And she said, what are you saying, Ray? And he said, we also have footage of the resurrection. He also wanted any living president to admit that they all knew that they were picked or chosen to become president beforehand. He described the chronovisor as a holographic teleportation machine that allowed him to speak to George Washington and to witness Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. Andrew says that he was first teleported to the state capital of New Mexico and it was in the same time period, but later he said that he was able to corroborate the capitol building as a common location that was involved in the program from a woman who said she often saw people materialize there. Andrew also claimed that Barack Obama was a part of the same teleportation time travel program and he went by the name Barry Sotero when he was 19. Obama was teleported to Mars to communicate with the beings there, and Obama has denied this claim. Basiago said that aliens started to visit Earth after atomic weapons were created and were starting to be used because they create a tear in the fabric of space-time.